If you've been following my channel from the beginning, then you should know that Kirby's Dream Land for the Game Boy is a favorite of mine. I mean, it was my second review. The game is loads of fun and a pretty great first outing for one of video games' favorite pink puffballs. And of course, Kirby went on to have plenty of sequels, including quite a hefty one on the SNES, that being Kirby Superstar. Eight games in one it proudly boasts on the cover, and it isn't lying as the game is jam-packed with Kirby goodness. And one of those eight games, Spring Breeze, just happens to be a remake of Kirby's Dream Land. Having played through it, I noticed quite a number of differences which gave me an idea. Let's have some fun and take a closer look at the differences between the two versions as we dare to compare. Of course, with Kirby Superstar being a SNES game, I won't be taking graphics or sound into consideration, but more so level differences. So let's get right into it. First up is Green Greens. Right off the bat, the biggest difference in the whole game is the presence of Kirby's copy ability. So you can suck up enemies and gain their powers, making Spring Breeze quite literally a breeze compared to the original. But that's not a bad thing, as you no longer have to wait around for bosses to supply you with projectiles to fend them off. The first half of Green Greens is represented, just significantly trimmed down. The hill you can go into to get health is still here, although it now covets a maximum tomato as opposed to the two health drinks in the original. This is followed by the Warp Star which takes you to the forest to fight the Bomb D who is also still here. A good stretch of the forest is missing in the remake, as after the Bomb D fight, you're pretty much at the giant tree. So no flying enemies or mushrooms to deal with here. In the remake, not only is the maximum tomato in a different place, but there is one up too. As far as I can tell, the fight with the tree is identical, but far easier and quicker with abilities. Here's where things start getting interesting. Instead of going to Castle Lolo, you skip straight to Float Islands, which I'm okay with as I never really liked the Castle Lolo stage all that much. But remember all the giant bodies of water you had to fly over in Float Islands? Well, here's the only one in Kirby Superstar. So much for Float Islands. The ruins are still pretty much intact, including the food in the corner and the extra life room, although the room is completely different in the remake. Once you come out of the ruins, you would normally end up at the pirate ship, but in the remake you end up outside of Castle Gates, followed by a short mini-boss that isn't in the original. Which granted is kind of cool, but if you remember my review, the pirate ship was my favorite set piece in the game. Also, they took out the whale. Ugh, is this game even worth playing anymore? In its place, the Warp Star takes you straight to the entrance of Castle Lolo, and once inside, you fight Lolo and Lala instead of the evil blimp that guarded the end of the original Float Islands. Once again, the fight is pretty much identical. Much like Green Greens, a lot of bubbly clouds has been consolidated. The start of the level outside with all of the clouds is represented briefly, but the next few screens with the umbrella enemies and giant pillars are missing. As is the giant cloud maze with the secret room that leads to the maximum tomato. In its place is a screen with food and a ton of bells, and one small screen in space. The mid boss is still here and is still a pain in the ass. What follows is the room full of bricks that you have to suck away, just considerably smaller. On a side note, the only time the microphone makes an appearance in the remake is here, and the different attacks are a joy to watch. Unfortunately, it's poorly placed and you can't get much use out of it. Your space word march towards the boss at the end of the level is still here and is just as fun and treacherous as it was in the original. Old Krakow, yes, this thing's name is Krakow, has some new tricks up its sleeve, like this lightning attack. Otherwise, he's pretty much the same. And finally, we've arrived at our final destination, Mount DDD. Remember all those cool mini trials before the boss refights? Well, all of that is gone. In its place is a short hallway full of enemies for you to choose which power up you want to take on the king with. Wow, King DDD has certainly given his room an overhaul, as this time he was actually able to gather a crowd, as opposed to the barren empty room in the original. It actually feels like a real fight now. 
And who's that making a cameo in the corner? Nice touch. Much like the rest of the bosses, DDD is a total pushover with your abilities. After dethroning the king, you're treated to the same adorable ending as the original. Overall, the Kirby Superstar rendition is enjoyable from start to finish, albeit very short as they cut out most of the fat, meaning it lasts around 15 minutes as opposed to the original's 45 minute run. But the essence of the original is still there. I would say play the original for a more fulfilling experience, but don't pass up Kirby Superstar as the whole game is excellent, not just the Spring Breeze section. I think that's going to do it for this episode of Dare to Compare. I'll see you back for the next one.